Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 28. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we are going to continue working on uh, making our player take damage um, and we're also going to fix a couple of things or improve a couple of things with our status class which we added last time. Okay, oh and first of all, um, big thank you to SPH for pointing out a bug in our code from last time, or it was more of a, something we forgot to do. Inside the draw function in our uh, game state class, we need to get rid of self.player.draw because um, our player is now part of this list of entities. Uh, draw gets called twice and also um, it will keep getting called even after our player is removed from the list because they've died, so we just need to get rid of that line which we've now done. A uh, big thank you again for pointing that out in the comments. Okay, so I've not recorded in a while, but that's given me a chance to uh, look over some of our code. And one piece I would like to change is if we just look at our take damage function inside of entity.lua, um, we, we do this. We uh, set a couple of values, then we use a status to flip those values back after um, after 100 ticks. And what I don't like about this is we uh, set these values and then we sort of, we just rely on the fact that these lines are next to each other um, to remind us that we need to turn these values back again or we need to turn vulnerability back to true and iframes to false. And that just doesn't feel right to me. It feels like if these things change together, they should live in the same place, which is a generally a good principle for programming. So what we'll do um, is change our status class so that we can pass in a function um, which contains the changes we want to make to our entity when the status starts and also we can use the function we already have which is the changes we'd like to make to our entity when the status stops. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that now. If we just uh, jump into status.lua you can see that we currently have a duration and an ondone. Ondone is the function we run when the duration um, runs out or when we reach that duration. But I'm also going to add an onApply function. And what we'll do with onApply is we will just call it. So if there's an onApply argument, then we just want to call onApply uh, instantly. And that means we can, inside of our entity, Let's just uh, neaten this up by putting this on a new line. Okay, so now inside of our um, inside of this bit here, we can just pass in an extra function, and we can pop these two lines inside of that function. And what this does is it just makes sure that um, it just makes the code more readable, really. Uh, that's, all, that's all it really does, or at least in my head, it feels like this is nicer because what we're communicating to ourselves when we look at this code um, in a couple of weeks after we've forgotten what it does, we're just communicating that these two things live together and are related because they're all arguments to the same, um, to the same function. And now we've done that, we can actually go one step further, which is if we create a new folder um, inside of logic called statuses, we can now pull out this code into its own file. So let's uh, make a new file. Let's call it iframes, because that's what this piece of code does. It toggles iframes on an entity. And let's uh, just quickly do the, uh, the normal boilerplating we do. And then we can say iframes.create. Uh, we need a duration and an entity. Now we can take our code from here. All of the code to do with creating the status and it can live on its own over here. Um, we do need to change self to be entity 
entity and it would be nice if uh, status was uh, sorry if the duration was also an argument so let's uh, make that happen as well and then what we can do is just call iframes dot create and pass in the duration and self which uh, inside of the entity um, class points back to the entity so our take damage function is now much shorter all of the iframe stuff lives in the same place and has been moved out somewhere neatly and it's just uh, it's a bit neater it's a bit easier to read so the last thing hopefully the last thing we have to do for this change is just require source dot logic dot statuses dot iframes frames good let's see if that works nope attempt to index global status ah of course that's the other thing we need to do inside of our iframes class we will need to include status so local status equals require now just move the mouse require source logic status because iframes, of course, is just an instance of a status. Oops, wrong button. Oh well. Now let's give it a go. Good, we can take damage. Do we ever? We currently don't stop taking damage. So let's. Um, just check that everything is still uh, making sense so oh of course we need to actually return the status that we create There we go. So the problem there is I wasn't returning anything from our iframes.create. We were just creating the status. So on apply was getting called, but um, on duration was never uh, was never or sorry on done was never getting called because we weren't actually passing the status back into our entity, so it was never getting ticked. But now it is. Cool. So um, that's made our code a bit neater, and now we can move on. And we can carry on with this pattern of pulling out statuses into their own files. And if we want to use our statuses for a knockback, so when the player punches an entity, we'd like that entity to get knocked back. We um, just need to add one more function or one more function argument to our status, and that is on tick. So down here, we'll just say inst on tick equals on tick, Oops. on tick. And what we'll do with this is every time our status gets ticked um, or every time we call the tick method on status we'll say if um, the status has an on tick method then we'll go ahead and call it and we'll give it the same arguments as on done there we go and so we now should be able to, inside of statuses, go ahead and create a new status, uh, so new file, and we'll call this one knockback. Local knockback, Oops. empty object, then return knockback, and uh, knockback.create. And we'll need our status, uh, so let's make sure we uh, include that. Logic.status. And so what we want to do here is return a status, so uh, status.create, which will cause an entity to move away from a given point when that, ent when that status is applied to the entity. So um, we'll need a duration, so we'll make we'll just make that an argument. 
um, we will need a we'll need an entity to uh, to move we will need a position uh, to move the entity away from and uh, we'll also need a strength which is sort of how far or how fast we want to move that entity and um, do we need anything else not at the moment I don't think so duration entity position and strength and we're going to create that status it will have a duration which is a uh, nice and obvious we don't need to do anything to the entity um, on done and we don't need to do anything on apply but on tick we want a function which will take uh, self owner and game and we want this function to make our entity move away from a given point and we can do this using our vector maths which we uh, we created a while ago now but hopefully i can still uh, remember how it works so let's just call it v actually and we'll say require oops source math vector so first of all we probably want to grab the unit vector um, which is so we covered unit vectors and how they work um, in a very early episode uh, I can't remember exactly which one it was but we went into it in a lot of detail so I won't go into it too much here um, but we need to normalize uh, it would also be useful to grab the position out of the entity which is getting punched so uh, let's just say pos equals entity dot position and then we want to normalize the ah yes so we want the entity pause so let's actually call this entity pause um, as well as the position we want to move away from which we'll call I suppose uh, target target pause just to make things um, nice and clear then we want to normalize target position and entity position this will give us a unit vector then we can work out the difference in x and difference in y we're going to apply to our entity's uh, current position so dx will be equal to unit vector dot dx times strength um, so this is sort of how far we want to move the entity in the x direction times game dot dt which will just make the animation smooth for us and dz will be very similar uh, unit vector dot dz times strength times game dot dt then we can from that we can work out the new x position for our entity which will be um, so just be entity pause plus dx and our new z will be entity pause dot dz and finally we can call entity dot position i think it's update position but i'm actually going to check so i don't get it wrong set position good job we checked entity set position and here we want to use the new x um, the existing y so we'll just use entity pause dot y and the new z cool so now let's actually use our knockback status and we can use it inside of punch.lua. So if we remember back a couple of episodes, when the player punches, they create an entity called punch. And when that punch entity collides with something which isn't the player, um, we make whatever it collides with take damage. And so this is a good place to also um, apply a status of knockback knockback.create and we need a duration so let's just start with 100 and we can uh, work out a good duration from there let's remind ourselves what else we need duration entity target position and strength 
So entity will just be entity, target position will be self.position, and strength, let's just start with, I have no idea what we'll start with, so let's just try 16 and go, um, and go from there. And of course we'll need to require knockback, so local knockback equals require source logic statuses dot knockback. Okay, let's uh, see what we need to fix to make this work. Nope. Attempt to call method apply status a nil value. So I imagine that's just because it's called add status. Yes, it is. So inside of knock, not inside of knockback, inside of punch. Add status instead of apply status. So try punching something. Attempt to form a from tick on local entity pos a table value. Okay, lure line 16 knockback. Ah, of course, I want entity pos.x and entity pos.z. It's just uh, going a bit too fast for my own good. There we go. So we uh, can now successfully, or almost successfully, punch our slime entities out of the way. They um, travel for a bit too far, for a bit too long, so let's uh, first of all lower the, um, let's lower the duration inside of punch. Maybe let's just say 10 ticks and see what that gets us. Okay, and they seem to go a bit too far as well, so um, also tempted to... Ah, that's the other thing we need to do, of course, is um, we need to call status.ticks to get the actual uh, duration rather than um, the duration we're passing in. So just to remind ourselves, status.ticks will give us the duration in terms of uh, the number of frames rather than um, the number of seconds, which is what we want. So uh, let's try again. Oop. Attempt to call method on done a nil value. So that's the final, final change we need to make to status is we want to say when the duration is expired, if uh, self dot on done, then call self on done and Okay, and 10 now seems a tiny bit, tiny bit short, um, and also 16 might be a bit too strong, so let's, in. where am I, here we go, so maybe let's instead say 20 ticks and we want maybe a strength of 8. Cool, that feels just about right, or it feels right for now. Uh, the other cool thing we can do is because our potion bottles are just entities, we can punch them as well. Uh, so that shows that it works in multiple places. And let's just turn debug mode off um, as well very quickly and have a bit of a play. So where's main.lua? Cool. So we need to uh, fix some of our collision boxes because they're a bit big at the moment because it's uh, very possible to take damage and not feel that we uh, we should have taken damage. But that's uh, that's an easy fix for a later episode. Uh, but there we have it. Um, we've added knockback to our game and we've tidied up our status code a bit more. So I will stop the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments or you just like to frame me a like, please do so. It does help out a great deal. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.